Good morning. Good morning. And、uh, welcome to February. How、That's、about、right. that? Can you believe the first month of 2021 is gone, and now we're in February? Hope your、uh, February has started off well.、Um, I'm excited,、uh, Melinda, because we're going to talk about a subject that I've been looking forward to us discussing for a while. I, I can't take credit for the title of this series. We're calling it "Good Grief,"、mm-hmm. and the 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 subject. I, I honestly, in in、uh, last year when we were preparing for the coming year for the messages we would do, I really felt impressed that we needed to do toward the beginning of this year a series on grief. Yes,、uh, I felt like it was important for、um, the number of people we know that are grieving, and we're going to talk about this more today. I think that corporately, the body of Christ and humanity, all of us, are grieving things. Right. And、um, it, when I, when I was talking with the staff about doing a series on grief,、uh, and I said, you know, we need to learn how to grieve well. Remember? And、right. Tori said. Well, call it good grief. <laughs> I immediately thought of Charlie Brown. Of course, that's of course. dating us to think of Charlie Brown saying "good grief," but、um, it is exactly what we want to look at because I believe that if we don't learn to grieve well,、uh, we can't truly get past traumatic things in our lives. Yes, and I think we、um, have been through seasons where, for some reason, I don't think we were taught how to grieve well. Just like there was a time period when, if you got married.、Um, People just thought you automatically would know what、right. to do. You'd figure it out. Yeah, figure it out as you go. But、um, there's a much better way. And you know, Melinda, I agree with you because when I think back over our lives, I just don't remember hearing a lot in the church taught about grief. No,、um, I, I remember some negative th- things. It seems about grief,、right. almost like you know, don't get stuck in grief, or you got to go on beyond grief. And but I don't know that I heard a lot growing up. Now maybe it was talked about, and I just missed it. But even as a, an adult, I don't remember hearing a lot of teaching in the church about grieving well or the grieving process. And so, this is why I think it's important that we discuss this. So I'm glad we're having this discussion. You and I, over the past five years in particular,、uh, maybe five to ten years, have learned a lot more about grief. Right. We've been more intentional. Yep. And I remember in, at a certain point in our life when. All of a sudden, we kind of realized that maybe we didn't understand grief、right. as fully as we needed to, and for our own personal reasons, in grieving things in our life, we had to learn what grief looks like and how to process it. And,、right. uh, so that's why I'm, I'm really happy this whole month we're going to be having this conversation with the church. I'm excited about this conversation, and uh, um, man, I, w- I just want to remind you、um, in the comments. Please engage. The more、yes. you engage, the better it is. First of all, for us on social media, the more people are going to see this message, and I believe it is so important that people see this message. Listen, right now, as、uh, you're watching this, if you have friends that are grieving, and I, I mean loss of any kind, and we're going to talk more about what grief looks like, but will you take the time to just go share this on your Facebook feed? Share this somewhere, or will you later maybe send this to a friend, somebody that you know, and tell them for the month of February we would love for them to join us. We would love. Listen, the more you share this, the more people that can see it. And our goal, man, if you don't know us by now, our goal is not Melinda. Our goal is never to 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 be famous or to be seen. This isn't about. In fact, you don't even have to know our names if you just joined in to see this. We don't need you to know anything about us except. We love people deeply, and we really, really want to help people that are grieving. You know, grief is、uh, usually described as a deep sorrow, especially it's used、uh, when it's caused by someone's death. But Wikipedia says that grief is the response to loss, particularly the loss of someone or something that has died. Uh, something to which a bond or an affection was formed, and although Melinda, although grief is uh, traditionally uh, and maybe conventionally focused on death of a loved one and our our emotional response to loss from that, right? It really is loss of anything, right? And it also has to do with physical, cognitive, behavioral. 
social, cultural, spiritual, and even psychological uh, aspects uh, and dimensions of grief. And it's so important. I have this statement that I remember when I first showed this to you. It was impressive that you said, did you get that somewhere? Did you come up with that? <laughs> that was awesome. That I knew I'd hit a home run then as I just meditated on grief. Now, I need you to know that a lot of this comes out of our own personal journey. Right. And uh, I want you to hear the statement, and it's this. The grief journey can often be longer than we want, harder than we thought, and deeper than we ever imagined it could be. It is never truly understood by observation. And that is so true, Melinda. The journey can take us a lot longer than we want sometimes. And it's harder in many ways than we want it to be. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's very key that in talking about it's um, never truly understood by observation. One nope. of the things I mentioned to you when you said that was um, just like our daughter who recently, you know, a few months ago gave birth. And so she had studied, done well to prepare. She and her husband had prepared. But it's one thing to do all that studying and learning but it's a whole nother level of learning when you go through it and experience right. it. And I think that um, our own personal journeys of grief have, have really added to how we can better understand how to help others yeah. now. You think you understand mm. until you go through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th th truly, it's never understood by observation. And you were talking about childbirth. I know that when I, I've said many times about your childbirths, the, the, our kids, right. and, I, and I will mistakenly say it, it was so easy <laughs> because you made it look so easy. But the fact is, I'm only observing. I'm there and I'm not experiencing. And please know that we, you can't understand always by observing someone's grief really what they're going through. And that's why it takes much grace the fact is that grace is much more than dealing with, with the death of a loved one. It, it also comes into our life through the depth of, of dreams, right. uh, broken relationships, uh, disappointments, things that didn't happen the way we want to happen. Would. Exactly. And I think that, Melinda, I think a lot of the church, um, and I'm not saying just us, our local church, but the church at large, the, the body of Christ, I think we're grieving much of what happened in 2020. Absolutely. Uh, people who... Uh, may never come to church with us again. People who don't feel safe. So much of what happened during the pandemic that changed the course of our lives. That, and you know, I'm not here to argue with you where or why or any of that. I'm just saying it did. It did. You know, you, you can you can fight about where it came from, why. You can have all your conspiracies you want. All I know is that I'm dealing with lives, and some people are gripped by fear. Uh, some people are uncertain of what they think. That was the word I was thinking of. There's so many uncertainties that we ex uh, experienced in 2020, and even it's carried over into 2021 because, um, you know, there have been times when things were, jobs were there or restaurants are open, and then they're suddenly closed. And it's, it almost feels like you're trying to build something on shifting sand because you're right. never s sure which way it's about to shift. Right. And what's going to continue or what's going to cease. So. And, and a lot of times people are irritated or they have some undiagnosable emotional feeling. They're not even sure what's going on. And I want to submit that sometimes it's grieving the loss of what was. Grieving the loss of friendships. You had people that maybe you were in a group with that you served with in church and, and they were like, man, I love you. I'm with you forever. And then, and then you're not able to see them or be around them. And, and then to find out maybe they're going to a new church, which is all fine, man, that's great. But what you had, you don't have anymore. Not right. the same. Changed. Change. And, and we grieve change. We, right. when things we, you know, as much as we love to say, we, uh, embrace change for many of us change is difficult and and then we start grieving when things go away from what they were but um grace is uh, uh, in, in the in the face of all the loss we go through grief is natural it yes. just happens and um uh i have written here in my notes that when it's when failed friendships 
the end of anything you believed was permanent, anything that you believed was a permanent thing in your life, when that ends, right. grief can, can, can be experienced. So the problem is grief can be a trap that holds people in a life, life-locked embrace. Right. Grief can be a trap that will hold you in a life-locked embrace if you don't learn how to process grief. And this is why I think it's so important that we're having this conversation, that we're discussing how do you process grief? How do you deal with it? Yeah, how do you avoid the trap? Yep. How do you not get locked? Because you, we have experienced in our lifetime people who all they can talk about is something that happened way back when. You know, grieving the loss of a loved one, grieving the loss of a relationship, grieving something that happened. And, and like when they talk to you about it, it's like they're reliving it all over. It's like it's happening now. It's like the pain was never healed. From yes, it. yes. So, so they did not go through the process in order to find the healing. And so the reason I want to do this series so badly and the reason I'm excited about the month of February is that I think that all of us are in some state of grieving. And uh, in the last year, we've dealt with so much loss in so many different avenues. And I think that we need to learn to naturally uh, process the grief because uh, grief is a natural process of life. Yes. And, and grief is a healthy part of the healing process. Absolutely. And I don't, I don't think we truly can be healed from the traumatic stuff that has happened to us without learning to grieve well. So here's the thing, ignoring grief, and you and I found this out, you probably were better at this than me because I'm, I'm one of the typical men of that didn't hurt me. I can move on. I, I, I'm fine. I'll be fine. And, and I had to learn to find out what's mine to feel Mm -hmm. in situations because uh, that that's a struggle for me and not wanting the negative feelings or the hard feelings. And so when, when learning to process great, great grief, you have to learn to do that. So what I, what we discovered and what I'm hoping other people will learn is that ignoring grief doesn't make it go away. No. And I, I've mentioned to you recently that um, as we were studying grief, how, when I thought about, I lost my first pregnancy, and um, I didn't deal with grief well at that time period. When I lost that baby, um, first of all, because it was early on, I had people that didn't really believe I was pregnant, or those who just thought, well, because it hadn't been born, I shouldn't really mourn the loss of the baby. And so what it caused me to do was I ran and hid. I pulled out of children's church. I didn't want to be around pregnant women, and I didn't want to be around anybody who wow. was going to talk to me about wow. it. And that kept me from processing um, the pain of the loss. Right. And it wasn't until we lost our Leah that the Holy Spirit began to help me and see how um, in order to grieve um, properly, basically, and to go through the natural process, I had to be willing to face the pain, feel the pain right. of the moment, and then lean into Holy Spirit in order to move forward. Yeah. You, you can't ignore it. No, you can't ignore to, it and hope it'll go away. It doesn't. You have to identify it. And, and one of the things about, especially let me speak into um, the loss of loved ones. I hear sometimes at uh, celebrations of life, stuff that just bugs me so bad when people say, well, you're going to have to learn to, to move on. You've got to move forward. You've got to go on. And, you know, when you're sitting there in that situation, you don't want to go on without your loved one. Mm -hmm. You don't want to move on. When a relationship's over and somebody says, well, you just need to pick yourself up and move on. But you don't want to move on. In, in fact, it's sometimes difficult for people to see whether it's a, a, a relative, a relationship, a dream. I don't even know who I will be without this person mm -hmm. or without this relationship or without this dream or without this job or without this home. And, and so for somebody just to say to you, you know, suck it up, buttercup, and move on, it, it's not helpful. It doesn't yeah, because... It's hurtful. No, yeah, because we... And some of us are so good at reframing things. There are certain personalities. Melinda, you and I talk about this a lot. There are certain personalities that know how to reframe things. But the problem is you can reframe a bad picture and it's still a bad picture. Yeah. You can reframe your hurt and you can sit there and look at it. And that really, all that means is you're looking at the way you want it to be but it's not changing what really is. What is. And everybody around you still sees what really is. And you're trying to lie to yourself and say, no, it's okay. It's going to be okay. 
And I, I'm not saying that reframing doesn't help us in life sometimes. I, I think it's great that some of us look at the good in things sure. and look for the good in things. That's great. But those people also need to learn how to grieve when they're when they're bad things inside the frame of their good. And, and you need to be able to, because guilt, grief is a healthy part of the healing process. And so we need to be able to do that. And the great news is that God is involved with us in the grieving process. He's not afraid of it. He wants us healed, healthy, and whole. And he, wanna helps, he wants to help us heal. Yes. He wants to help us deal with it and get through it. He doesn't want us stuck. God doesn't want us stuck in past hurts. No. Because the fact is, if I don't grieve properly and heal, I stay stuck. I was talking to someone just today, and I said, the reason I think it's so important that we learn to do this is you just spoke of a situation where our daughter died a few years back, but in that grief, you went back almost 40 years or 30 years, 30-something years, right? Yeah, not 40. Not 40, because we haven't been married 40 <laughs> Sheesh, we didn't have a baby before we got married, but it would have been 30 30 something something years. years You went back and this is what blows people away. I've dealt with that You can think you've dealt with something and something will trigger it And we're going to look at the stages of grief in the week to come And we're going to look that there is no blueprint for how to grieve And you can be going through something and all of a sudden triggered Something that you thought you dealt with listen, I say this And I'm going to say it again this way. If you think you've dealt with something and it keeps floating up to the top, you probably haven't dealt with it. If you think you've dealt with something and it keeps coming back, you probably haven't dealt with it. Not completely. Not so that you're healed from it. If it keeps, let me say it this way. If it keeps showing up in your present, then it's not in your past. It's in your present. And, and, and if you're talking about something and instead of being able to talk about it, you relive. Yeah. What is it you say? It? Tell it, don't relive it. <laughs> then that's a good sign. That it's a good sign. You it's in your present. It, yeah. and, and there's no guilt in that. We're not no. condemning anyone. No. We're saying we had to learn because you just so beautifully shared that story. And, and, and thank you for that of how one grief took you back to deal with unresolved grief mm-hmm. and to see how, because, you know, and, and we didn't know back then how to deal with it. We just thought you had to pray, work real hard, quote some scriptures, and move forward. Plow forward. Plow on, and we did. But, but God is so into uh, and wanting to heal us. Uh, Holy Spirit was promised to be a comforter, and indeed, He's good at it. Excellent. And He did comfort us through it all. But the, the thing we didn't allow Him to do that He now, in the present day, we're learning to let him do in all situations right. is let him heal and let him help us grieve and let him walk with us through it. Because what happens is when we learn to engage in the process and learn to walk through our grief, then we can find healing from those past things. Listen to what Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says. Will you read that, Melinda? Sure, I'll be 2 glad Corinthians to. Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And then I just want to read it from the Passion the passage. Passion Translation. Thank you. Couldn't get that together this morning. The Passion Translation. All praises belong to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for He is the Father of tender mercy and the God of endless comfort. Listen to that. He's the God of endless comfort. Yes. Oh, man, just breathe that in right now. Whatever you're going through, wherever you're at, no matter what we have going on, He's the God of endless comfort. Whatever you need comfort in right now, whatever you need strength for right now, Whatever, whatever you're grieving right now, even now, whether you understand it all or not, just drink this in. Your God is a God of endless comfort. He always comes alongside us to comfort us in every suffering. Come on. He always comes alongside us to comfort us in every suffering so that we can come alongside those who are in any painful trial. We can bring them the same comfort that God has poured out upon us. And just as we experience the abundance of Christ's own sufferings, 
even more of God's comfort will cascade upon us through our union with Christ. So there's no doubt that grief can feel like affliction, but the promise is that even in our affliction, God comforts us, right. that he comes alongside us, that he's with you. And I've seen him in our lives so many times to help us in our time of grief. You know, one of the things I loved out of that scripture as well was not only do we see how faithful he is through Holy Spirit to comfort us, but how when he's comforted us, no matter what we went through, from that place of learning to be comforted by Holy Spirit, then we can turn and in any situation help someone else right. to find comfort. Now, this, this may be a very sensitive subject to come at it this way, but I had to be honest with myself. If someone starts sharing with me something they're going through, and my immediate response is how I'm going through even worse, mm-hmm. If someone is sharing with me, they're grieving something and I can't comfort them with the comfort with which I've been comforted, then I haven't been comforted. Ouch. So if I haven't received comfort and healing from the grief and the stuff in my past, how can it cascade through me to someone else? Instead, what happens is when you say, honey, I need to tell you something. I'm really struggling. Well, you think that's something. And if my conversation back to you when you tell me you're going through something is to one-up you with how bad my life is. Sounds like a competition. Yeah. And mm. so you, so here's That's the issue. Comfort. Yeah, come on. And so I know that we all go through things. But he says, if we receive the comfort of Christ, we're able to comfort. I can't even begin to tell you how processing the grief of loss in the fa- past few years has changed the way we're able to comfort others. I'm able to sit in other people's grief. That's a huge thing. You might need to say that again and explain it. I'm able to sit in other people's grief. That is to sit with them, listen to them, feel with them, cry with them, hurt with them, be there for them, let them cuss at me if they need to, let them have whatever emotion they need to do without feeling some pastoral obligation to fix them, Mm -hmm. but just sit there because I know what I went through. And because I was comforted with a, a comfort from God, I'm able to comfort others because I let him heal my hurt Uh, Because we went through this, we're able to understand. And this is what's so beautiful. God wastes nothing. He did not create it, but he will use it. So he didn't create the hurt, but the stuff we went through and the, 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 the way that he has comforted us. I love that it says, and even more God's comfort will cascade upon us through our union with Christ. And in that union with Christ, not only are we comforted, but we're able to comfort others because the God of all comfort is able to comfort us in our afflictions, and then he's able to, to he enables us to help others, to comfort right. others. Man, let me just go back to this. When you've been comforted, you are able to comfort others. That's a good work he's prepared for us. Amen. Amen. But if you haven't been comforted, Can't it give is... give what you don't possess. Come on, you know what? When you haven't been comfortable, when you haven't been comforted... I got a lot of comfort words going on here. (laughs) When you haven't been comforted, you are uncomfortable with other people's grief. Absolutely. You are uncomfortable with with letting somebody grieve, with letting somebody show any emotion because that's uncomfortable for you. I need to fix this. Mm -hmm. I need to make you laugh. I need to make you okay. When it's not okay. And it's, you know, are you okay? What do you think, man? No, I'm not okay. But I could be okay. And I will be okay because I know the one who can make it okay. But in this moment, there's a process I've got to go through. And that's one of the things I want people to get out of this conversation, Melinda. It is okay for the process for to take as long as it takes, as long as you're staying in the process. Right. It's okay for you to be in that process, to be in that journey, as long as you aren't hiding from it, running from it, not dealing with it, trying to press it down. But as long as you're in the process and allowing God to comfort you and change you and, and letting him heal you, then he will, uh, we talk about a new normal. He'll help you find the new normal or he will help you not move on as if you're forgetting what was, right? but you're moving on with the memories of what was 
with the lessons and wisdom of what was, um, not moving from, but moving with all that you gained in, yeah. in, in all those situations. And especially in the case of where you've lost a loved one, you're not forgetting them. Nope. But you are continuing to live and taking forward exactly. the memories that you shared. And we've both heard people say, I feel like if I'm okay, I'm letting go of them. But you, no, as I long as they're alive in your heart and in your memory, in your conversation, you, you don't have to let go of them. No. How could we let go of scarcely a day goes by that you and I don't see something in our house from our Leah? It, it, something she drew, something she said, something she painted, something she gave us, something she stole from Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's something there. And what do we do? We rejoice in those moments. Right. And we rejoice knowing that we said so long for a season, but we will be joined together again. And uh, does it hurt? Are there times that we cry? Yes. Mm -hmm. But we have been comforted with a, with a comfort that only God can comfort you with and, and, and gain strength in that. And, and so God wastes nothing because he wastes nothing. We, knows he will, we know that he will use the things we've been through to help others. And as, as we always say, I just want to say it again, God didn't, he might not have caused it, but he will use it. And so just know the season you're going through and the hurt that you may be feeling and the stuff the church is in. Let me just speak to corporately as humanity, the stuff we're going through, this is not going to be wasted. No, he wastes nothing. And it will, it will, there is so much fruit being produced in our lives right now. And it's good. It's good stuff. Absolutely. And so, so I think it's important that we understand grief and we learn to work through it and learn to process it. And because everyone will experience, I believe, experience grief and loss at some points in their life, at some point, I believe it's important that we understand it. And that's why we're taking the time to do this. So uh, there, there are just four things I want to say in order to grieve well, you'll need to do. And, and this will set us up for next week when we're going to look at the stages of grief. And it'll take us two weeks to go through the stages of grief. We'll right. look through Next week, we'll look at three of them and the following week, three. And then the last week, we'll look at grieving with hope, which is uh, my favorite message for um, a homegoing celebration is grieving with hope. But in order to grieve well, you're going to need to do these four things. You're going to need to learn more about grief. Don't be afraid to study about grief. Don't be afraid to have these dialogues. You know, you need people in your life that you can talk to, to about grief and that you can learn things. And, right. And especially if your personality is one that wants to ignore feelings, you need somebody that helps you and that sees. And you need someone who's able to look at you and say, are you grieving something? What's going on right now? Because for our relationship, that's a hard thing for me. Sometimes I can be going through and grieving the loss of something and I just get irritable irritating mm. and mean and harsh. And, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes sadly you have to look at me and say, have I done something to make you mad? Are you, why are you so irritable? And sometimes I don't even realize what I'm going through, but there's something that I'm grieving the loss of or, or something. And, and again, I just want to go back. Grief is not about someone dying always. No. And I, I want to bring out that point a little more. Um, when you said you get irritable, Oftentimes, you can be grieving something or someone, and like you mentioned in the opening, because it can affect you emotionally or physically, and you won't even catch it. Yeah. It's the people around you who'll start noticing you're different, yeah. and they may not know why. And it's important to, it's, that's why it's to so take important. the cues and, and to take time to learn about it, because in those moments when someone's having a difficult time and being agitated, like we talked about the other day, when I realized something was going on, it kept me from taking a personal offense with right. you. And rather, right. I was able to say, what can I do, honey? Right. And you know, in that day, I couldn't even tell you what I was grieving. Right. But after you started saying, you know, it, it, there's nothing makes me happier than for several people to say you're acting a certain way. Because I want to say, <coughs> excuse me, I want to say, no, I'm not. But then after several people say it, you're like, okay, I, there must be something wrong with me. I must be acting a certain way. And, and at that moment, I couldn't exactly, even though I felt and kind of could sense, and, but I couldn't. I couldn't, couldn't and, verbalize. And you know what it takes then in our, in our life? Great grace. 
Right. It takes great great. It takes take great. It takes great grace. And remember th- that evening at some point, I just walked to you and hugged you, and we couldn't even with words. We couldn't even word in it, that moment. It took great grace for both of us because grace for you to have an ear to hear that I was saying, "Hey, I'm seeing something that's right. not normal," and and great grace for you then to be vulnerable to discuss it when it was time. Right. So you got to learn more about grief. Um, yeah. That's man. Stay tuned for all these messages. Um, number two, you've got to believe that you will adjust. Yes. Things will change. Things will get better. And you will, you can move forward. You've yes. got to believe that you will adjust to this loss, whatever the loss is that you're grieving. You've got to give your t- yourself time to accept it. And we'll talk about that more in the stages, but yes. uh, you've got to give your t- yourself time to accept it. That's why I, I try my best at a homegoing celebration, what most of you would classically refer to as a funeral. I don't call it that because nobody's dead there. There's someone who's transitioned there and they, they're more alive than we are. Yes. And uh, so their, their celebration of life, um, I, I try not to say things like move on or, or you know, y- y'all just need to let, the, I just don't I, don't, I try my best to say nothing that sounds like that. Instead, I, I like to speak of the process of grief and, and the time that it will take and giving yourself grace for that. So give yourself time to accept it. And then the fourth one is if you're stuck in grief, you need to seek help. Yes. And I just want to say, if anybody today is watching this conversation, Melinda, there is no shame in realizing you are stuck in grief, but you can get help. You can seek a, a pastoral help, a counselor, a friend. Just be honest with someone. And in fact, today, how I want to close our discussion is just with this. Would you dare? Would you dare ask Holy Spirit if you're grieving something? Like right now, some of you may want to look at your spouse and be like, hey, you've been real irritable. Are you grieving something? They're not <laughs> going to take it well, let me tell you. But uh, maybe maybe you're the one who's been irritable and maybe you need to be honest and say, I, I don't know, maybe I'm grieving something. Maybe it's not even as important right now what you're grieving as it is to identify. I think I'm dealing with the loss of a relationship, of a dream, a thought, of a thing. And then will you be honest with yourself if you need to deal with loss that has happened in your life? Would you just be honest and cry out to the God of all comfort? If you're going through that today, you know, Melinda, that was the thing even just the other day was the ability for for me to stop in that moment. And thank God it was a matter of, of, of an hour or so that we were able to deal with it and say, what, what is this feeling? Right. And for me to say, no, I'm not upset with you, but I am dealing with something. And, um, and you know, it, it is so interesting because it was earlier that day that I found out a friend who I was believing to be healed from COVID had died. And I said, you know, that's terrible. And I went on with the day. That's terrible, terrible news to hear. And it hit me, but I went on with the duties of the day. And the the more I went on with the day, the more irritated I got. And the shorter with you and being, you know, just being short, not being patient, not being gentle, not being loving and kind. Because everything stopped at the moment that I felt that, that I couldn't process it. And um, tomorrow morning, I'll get to go to... um, my friend's celebration of life. And still, even now, talking about it, I'm starting to feel the emotions. But I would rather feel those emotions and deal with that loss, a tragic ending of a beautiful life, and process that in a healthy way than to let it, I don't even have a Kleenex, sorry, y'all, let it sink down and begin to cause trouble between us or cause trouble in my own emotional state. And this is why it's so important, y'all. Man, this was a setup by Holy Spirit. None of this uh, was on our notes or plan. But um, this is why it is so in- important that we learn to grieve. I grieve with hope. I grieve with hope that my friend and I will be reunited in a resurrection. I grieve with hope that we will be together again. But I grieve. And that's what we have to learn to do is grieve well. So would you grab my hand, Melinda? And I want us to pray for everybody that's, that's watching us now. For every person that's going through a grief right now, 
Um, we ask that the God of all comfort, that the God who comforts us in our afflictions, those of you who are dealing with loss of a loved one, loss of a relationship, you're dealing with the loss of something that you thought was permanent and now it's gone. Whatever the loss is, we ask right now, Holy Spirit, would you flood every heart and every home? We ask you, all of you who are dealing something, would you just right now say, Holy Spirit, help me? Would you reach out in some way and, and let the God who comforts us in our affliction, who loves to come alongside us, who is always willing to come alongside us, would you let him right now flood you? Would you let him flood over you with his healing power and let him help you begin this process of healing and dealing with your grief in Jesus' name, amen. We love you so much, all of you. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for being a part of this series. I just want to encourage you, stay tuned through the whole series. This just started us. You really need to hear the, the stages of grief and how we're going to help you work through that. And those will be very important for us to do that together. That's right.